Welcome to Lockdown Conservation Science. I'm David Mills and I can be contacted at the email address on screen. Today's video is on the subject of making up percentage solutions. So today we're going to look at percentage solutions of the type weight for weight, weight for volume or volume for volume. We're not going to be covering molar solutions today as that will come up in a later video after we've covered a little bit more chemistry. We'll also consider some of the issues that come up when making these type of solutions and some of the, the, the common mistakes that people make. Just some terminology and definitions to start. The material we want to dissolve in solution is called the solute and the liquid we're trying to dissolve the material in is called the solvent. The combination of solute and solvent is the solution. Generally, there'll be less solute than there will be solvent, but that's a, just a, a general comment. It's not always true. Why are we considering percentage solutions? Well, typically they're made up very easily using minimal equipment. We just need some way of measuring a volume of liquid and we need some weighing scales. So literally a Pyrex jug and a set of baking scales are what you're going to see later in this video. We don't need to know anything about the atomic and molecular makeup of the solute or the solution or the solvents as if we would if we were going to be making molar solutions. All we need to know is what percentage we're aiming for, the amount of solution we wish to make and whether it's a weight to weight solution, a weight to volume solution or a volume to volume solution. So, as I've just said, the percentage solutions are typically given in one of three ways weight to volume, weight to weight, or volume to volume. In each case, the percentage concentration is a fraction of the weight or volume of the solute to the total weight or volume of the solution. That's the solution, not the solvent. These three ways are not interchangeable. You need to be explicit about which way you're using or which way you're trying to make things up. If you're making a volume volume solution and you accidentally measure weights instead, you will not get the percentage you're aiming for. So just some common examples you may have come across for different ways of showing weight, weight, volume, volume, or weight to volume. Some common chemicals are given as a weight to weight percentage. A common one, hydrochloric acid, concentrated hydrochloric acid is 37% weight for weight. Not all chemicals give their concentration this way, but some do. Some explicitly give molar concentrations. In practice, you may have made up solutions of IMS in water to change things up wetting characteristics. So a 50% volume volume solution of IMS in water is something you may have made. Another solution you may have come across in practice would be something like Paraloid B72 made up to maybe half or weight percent weight to volume for use as either an adhesive or a consolidant. We'll now cover how to make up the solutions in, all, in the order that you're more likely to encounter them. So most common of all the solutions you're likely to encounter will be weight to volume. This will be where you're weighing up some quantity of a solid and dissolving it in some amount of solution. The common catch when making up solutions of this type is that people forget the volume of a solution increases as you dissolve more solute in it. The trick is to use less solvent, dissolve the solute in the reduced amount of solvent and then top up with solvent to the total required volume and give it a good thorough stir to make sure everything's mixed in. So in the next segment of this video, we're going to go to the kitchen and make up the standard solution described here. So we're going to make up 50 millilitres of a 0.5% weight to volume solution of Paraloid B72 in IMS. So using the formula on the previous slide, we have 0.5% is the weight of the solute over the volume of solution, which works out to be 0.25 grams in 50 millilitres. In this demonstration, we're going to make up 50 millilitres of a 0.5% solution of Paraloid B72 in IMS. I've already weighed out 
the B72 off camera just for ease. And we have it here as a white powder. So how we're going to do this is we dissolve the B72 into less than the amount of solvent we think we need. So if we want to make 50 milliliters, we would expect 50 milliliters of solvent. But we're actually going to use about 40 milliliters to start with. And the reason for doing this is when you dissolve a solid in a solution, you actually get a volume change. Usually the volume increases. So if we'd gone straight to 50 milliliters and dissolved our material in it, we would get more than 50 milliliters of solution, which is not what we want. So to get an accurate 50 milliliter solution, we dissolve our solid in less than 50 milliliters and then add more solvent to bring it up to the 50 milliliter mark. Again, you would usually be doing this in a graduated cylinder or um, a measuring flask of some description. But due to limitations of scientific equipment in the kitchen, I'm making these up in uh, some glass shop bottles. And now we have 50 milliliters of a 0.5% solution. Volume to volume percentage solutions are more commonly encountered when you've got two liquids and you need to mix them. In this case, it's most common to call the smaller volume of liquid the solute and the larger volume the solvent. But if you've got a 50% solution, then there's no difference between the volume of solute or solvent. So it makes no difference. So we just pick one to call it the solvent. There are some unexpected catches when making up volume to volume solutions. And this is actually due to the interaction between the molecules of the solvent and the solute. We know, for example, if we had add 500 milliliters of water to 500 milliliters of water, we get a thousand milliliters of water. So adding chemically identical solutions always gives the expected sum of volumes. But if instead in our example, we have 50 milliliters of water and 50 milliliters of IMS, we won't actually get 100 milliliters of solution. We won't get 100 milliliters of 50% solution. We will actually get roughly 96 milliliters of solution. This is due to the bonding between the molecules in the water and the ethanol. They're actually there's slightly stronger hydrogen bonding between the water and the ethanol molecules. This actually reduces the space that the molecules take up and reduces the total volume of solution. So we would actually need to add more solvent to make up the required volume. So we're going to go back to the kitchen to make up this dilute solution of IMS in water. So we're going to take 200 millilitres or make 200 millilitres of a 50% solution of IMS in water. So we know volume of solute over volume of solution, we're expecting 100 to 200. In this demonstration, we're going to make up 200 millilitres of a 50% solution of industrial methylated spirits in water. So we're going to start with 100 millilitres of IMS, which I've already measured out. Um, not particularly accurately, as I don't have a measuring cylinder here, so I'm just using these uh, shot uh, glass bottles to get a, a, a fairly accurate measurement. I've also dyed the IMS with just a drop of food colouring, so it shows up on camera. So we take 100 millilitres of IMS, Add it to the cylinder or to the container we're going to use to make the rest of the solution. Get the last few drops. And then we top up to the 200 milliliter mark, which is here, with water.
and that's just at about the 200 milliliter mark a little drop more so now we have a 50% solution of IMS in water what we'll find out is if I actually measured the volume of water I added from the jug we would actually need to add slightly more than 100 millilitres of water to make 200 millilitres of solution and this is because the mixing of the IMS and the water the molecules actually attract each other much more strongly so the volume of the liquid is reduced um, the molecules take up less space so you actually need slightly more water but this is still a 50 percent solution the weight to weight percentage is possibly the least frequently encountered percentage solution type but it's also the most frequently misunderstood a common mistake when making up a weight to weight solution is to weigh the solute and then weigh the solvent and combine them this is incorrect though because the percentage is the weight of the solute over the weight of the solution and we have to remember the solution is the solute and the solvent combined typically to prepare one of these of a solution of this type we would weigh up the solute and then weigh up maybe three quarters of the expected weight of the solvent and combine the two more solvent can then always be added to bring up the weight of the solution the kitchen again beckons as we look to prepare one kilogram of a five percent weight to weight solution of sodium carbonate in water In this demonstration we're going to make one kilogram of a five percent solution of sodium carbonate so this will be a five percent weight for weight solution of sodium carbonate so we start by weighing out 50 grams of sodium carbonate So there we have 50 grams and now to make this up to one kilogram we just add water so we might want to make this up to a smaller total first and just give everything a good stir just to make sure everything dissolves and I realise it's hard to see on camera exactly what's dissolving but then it's mostly dissolved and we just top up to a total weight of one kilogram so I try very hard not to overshoot very slightly overshot but this is good enough to show the, the idea so we can now take out of the weighing scale and we have our solution and what we can see is we actually have about a litre of solution which is kind of what we'd expect we've got about 950 grams of water 50 grams of sodium carbonate so about a kilogram in total of solution and as it's mostly water about a kilogram of water is roughly one litre where well, a kilogram of water is one litre so this is a five percent solution of sodium carbonate so in the final demonstration 
We're going to make up a solution so you will actually believe that the concentrations I'm saying I'm making are what they should be. So we're actually going to make about a 14% weight volume solution of salt, just plain cheap table salt in water, because this is a demonstration you can do at home quite easily. So we need 56 grams of salt. We weigh out 56 grams of salt. We slightly overshoot. We take some out. 56 grams of salt. And to this, we make up 500 milliliters of solution. So we add our salt to the jug. And we take some water. And we make it up. We'll make it to 400 milliliters and give it a stir to get all of the solid to dissolve. To get it to dissolve faster you could use hot water but it's mostly all gone. I can see when well, it might not be so clear on camera. So we make this up to about 450 millilitres. And you'll see in a moment why I'm making up such a particularly odd solution. So we transfer our 450 millilitres to a more tall container. And we actually have some undissolved salt, so we'll just give it a swirl. And that's got the last of the salt into solution. So what are we going to do now with 450 millilitres of salt solution? How can I prove to you this is really the concentration I'm intending? Well, if it's the concentration I intend, a fresh egg will be neutrally buoyant in this solution. If it's too concentrated, the egg will float to the surface. If it's not concentrated enough or too dilute, the egg will sink to the bottom. So if I've done my chemistry correctly, this egg should float in about the middle of the glass. And what you can see is it's actually sunk to the bottom. <laughs> oh well. This may be due to some undissolved salt. Let's just give it a stir. Mix everything in. Stop the egg from spinning. That's closer to what I was expecting to see. So the egg is neutrally buoyant. So after a few minutes, I gave it another quick stir. The egg has actually lifted off of the bottom. So the solution was correct. Uh, an egg is not the most reproducible thing to be trying to float in a glass of water. So I have a solution that is approximately the concentration I was intending to make. As close as I can make in a kitchen with a cheap set of weighing scales for baking, um, a couple of cheap measuring glasses, uh, cheap measuring jugs. And if I lower the camera down just to prove, 
we can actually see the egg is floating. It is neutrally buoyant. I will call that a success. Thank you. It's no longer floating directly to the top or sinking to the bottom. It's staying roughly where it is in the solution. Although that said, it's just sunk to the bottom again. So I actually need a bit more salt in this solution. This should be, be correct. There is some salt left in the container.